Welcome, my name is Callie McCatherine, and today I'm going to take you on a tour of Adobe Bridge. I'm starting in Photoshop CS4 and you'll notice on the new options bar that was added in CS4 there's a button to launch Bridge. You'll see the same button in all Creative Suite applications. Or you can choose from the file menu Browse in Bridge, which is my favorite way to launch the program. If you weren't aware, Bridge started shipping with Creative Suite 2, and it's a standalone application that can be used to manage your files, perform actions to Photoshop, or even as a dashboard to drag and drop into Illustrator and InDesign. And just to let you know, nothing needs to be copied into Bridge, moved into Bridge, or loaded into Bridge. At the Bridge Home Workspace, I'm seeing my desktop. I'll double-click that folder to get inside, and I have three folders sitting on my desktop. I'll hide so you could see those three folders just on my operating system level. When I come back, I'll double click on my class files, and here I can see a collection of images, Illustrator files, InDesign documents that I want to work with. To get a better look at one of these documents, I can click once, and it gives me a preview window. Although since my resolution is only 1024 by 768, I need a little bit more screen territory to see this image. So I'm going to drag and drop preview to the lower left corner, and this way I can arrange my panels all in one spot. By putting my panels all down on the lower left, I have a lot more room for icons here. So I'll drag and drop metadata by the panel name or tab on top of preview, and I'll drag and drop keywords on top of that. Once all the panels are nested together in this group, I can drag this gray line on the right, far right, and have more room for icons. Now here's how I use Preview. When I click on the Preview window, the larger I make this by dragging this gray bar to the right, the more detail I'll see. So as I pull it to the right, it gets wider. As I pull it up, it gets taller. And there's even a nice little feature that's been built in here for a few versions. If I click once on the eye in this photo, for example, it gives me a magnified view. Using the wheel on my mouse, I can zoom in or zoom out, or just the plus or minus keys on your keyboard. And if I click once anywhere in this loop window, it disappears. So this workspace is one that I like to use frequently. However, this favorites view has the spots that I like to surf to often. If I want to see more detail about exactly where I am on my hard drive, I can click the Folders tab, which is nested just behind Favorites. You'll see that up here at the top. And in Bridge CS4, they actually added this path, which I absolutely love. So it shows me how I navigated to that folder originally. This path bar was just added. What I want to use Bridge for for this example is batch renaming. I can't tell you how often I've dumped a batch of digital camera images, and they get fairly useless names. DSE something, IMG something. I can slide this icon in the lower right corner up to get a larger preview. But I want to name these because they're all photos of my dogs and their friends. So if I've just selected the folder, it assumes I want to rename all files. I can click once on an individual image or shift click on a series to just rename these three. Or I can hit Command A on the Mac or Control A on PC to select all to rename all. And the preview window shows me that I have 23 items. I'm ready to rename all of them, so I'll go to my Tools menu and choose Batch Rename. And just so you know, this is exactly as if I went to my operating system and individually hand renamed each file. It is renaming them in the same folder, and it's a permanent name change. So I'm going to rename each of these with text. All of these are choices that you can use, and you can add multiple fields to rename your images. Or I've even used this on text files and PDF pages extracted as separate files. It's a great way to organize yourself, especially if you're a web designer and you're getting images that are non-web compliant with spaces in the folder name or file name. So here I just chose the field text. I'm going to click in Type Text and type the word dogs. I like to use an underscore as a separator to make it web compliant because spaces are a no-no. I'll click on this next field and I'll choose Sequence Number. And when I choose sequence number, it tells me that it's going to do three digits. And if I look down here, I can see that it's going to rename them starting with dogs001.jpg. Since there's only 23 files, I'm going to switch it to a two-digit numbering system. So when I click on three digits, you'll see I can go all the way up to six. When I choose two digits, here it'll be dogs01 through dogs23. And I hit rename, and it's that quick. All of these files can now be used. Now my standard workflow is when I get a collection of images in that I want to begin working on and I've just dumped them off of my camera to my hard drive, I want to rate these to pick my favorites to make a to-do list for color correction or image editing. So under the View menu is Slideshow. And when I choose View Slideshow, I can hit the spacebar key immediately to pause. 
Slideshow has keys that work in this mode, and if I simply hit the letter H on my keyboard, it hides or shows the keys that work in the slideshow mode. So one of my favorites is to set a rating. By hitting just the numbers, 1 through 5 on the keyboard, you rate an image building a to-do list. I'm going to hit H again to hide that menu, and I'll hit the number 5 because I really like the photo of this dog. I'll hit my right arrow key on my keyboard and it goes to the next image. Not in love with this one, but it's adorable, so I'll give it a 3 simply by hitting the number 3 on my keyboard. Right arrow again will give this one a 2. Right arrow again will give this one a 4. Right arrow again will give this one a 3. And each time I'm ready to move the next one, I simply hit a single letter, 1 through 5, to give it a rating. I'm going to stop here and hit Escape to get out of full screen mode. And now I can do View Sort by Rating. And when I sort by rating, the unrated ones go to the top of the list. I'm just using the wheel on my mouse to scroll up. So to see the 5-star images first, followed by 4-star and 3-star, I'll do View, Sort, and I'll turn off Ascending Order. When I turn off Ascending Order and scroll up with the wheel on my mouse, here's the 5-star, 4-star, 3-star. And the last thing that's helpful to do here is maybe I want to select one individual image. I can click right in this empty column where there are blank stars right above dogs 20. When I click in the five star category, it resorts that to the top of the list.